Good morning. Welcome to Planet Mojo. Izzy and I are going to head down to the North Prairie and see what it looks like in winter. It's going to be a very interesting hike because it's really, really windy, like 20 mile an hour winds and we have at least two feet of snow out there so it's going to be a real difficult walk but that's why i generally never get back there in the winter so i gotta at least try it once not going to be easy i started today working in here and it just got so frustrating i had to give up i took the duck set her outside and started working getting these water uh, clamps in place and I got it all the way to this side I'm going to change this a little bit tomorrow but I was working over here and all of the boxes that I had out here just picked up and took off into the woods we had a huge gust of wind is you know probably a 30 mile an hour gust it's sustained 20 miles out there right now so just a windy day so what we're going to do is Izzy and I are going to walk through the North Prairie where I'm restoring it back there, see what it looks like, see what kind of tracks we got going through there, um, that kind of thing, and kind of get an overview of the trees that I need to hack and squirt because I'm going to try getting there tomorrow to do that if it's not too bad down there. Then we'll take the rock road, come all the way back around, and come up through the back here, if possible, and pick up some of these boxes along the way. I'm not sure how well you can see it, but they go way down into the woods, and I need to clean that up. So the day was kind of interrupted by the duck. Oh yeah, the duck, when that wind came and took them boxes, the duck started squawking and flapping its wings and stuff and got all scared. So I just stopped, brought the duck back in, put her heating pad back on, gave her medicine, um, and then just left her alone so she could calm down. We got our sick duck here, if you haven't seen the recent videos. So I'm going to actually cover her up so she can rest a bit. And find Izzy. I just saw her out there somewhere. Find Izzy, and we're on our way. I'm trying to keep my back to the wind. It is really windy. But the wind's coming from the opposite side of the ridge, so we're a little bit sheltered down in here. This is just right behind the house in the Oak Savannah Restoration Project. This is all going to be prairie grass as well. But this is only one year old. The stuff down here is two years old. So it'll be interesting to see what it looks like in the winter. If you can see anything. It might just be a bunch of snow. I don't know. So let's head down there. Yeah, we do have some pretty deep snow. But so far it's not too bad. I have 25 burr oaks coming this spring. And I'm going to be planting like two of them here, two of them here, and one over here, and probably ten of them back in there. I don't know. It's going to be interesting finding places for them. We have back here along the edge on the other side of the road in the pasture over there, and then along the other road. Nothing else is clear enough yet. I'd like to get some in here, but it's not clear enough, so they would just die. They either have to be at the edge of the woods or in a cleared area. They are not very shade tolerant. Okay, Izzy, you leave that. Let's, yeah, let's do without it. Go. No, Izzy, go. Look at how deep them tracks are. I'm not sure what they are. I'm guessing deer, but it, it, uh, I can't see any, uh, print at the bottom of the hole. It's so deep.
yeah, this is going to be a little difficult. Yeah, I could actually probably come in here with the Husqvarna brush whacker. This is mostly just real little stuff. Uh, it's all brambles and there's some invasives in here. Not a lot to clear. Just clear an area out and plant a, a burr oak right just off the road there. Oh, look at how deep that is. She's up to her belly. Okay, let's do this. Don't bring the ball. I don't want to carry that if you leave it. All I'm seeing down here is deer track. I don't know how smaller animals move around in this stuff. I'm not sure how well you can see that, but that's a deer track. And it goes o over a foot into the snow. I can't really see the bottom. This is some pretty deep stuff. This is the old deer run. Looks like they're still using it. And they're coming into the, the prairie restoration. This is pretty much the beginning of the prairie restoration. Yeah, look, now we're gonna have this ball out in the middle of nowhere. And I really don't wanna come back for it. Not in this deep snow. But I guess I'll probably be over here tomorrow. I can hear the trees creaking and cracking. There's so many dead trees in this area from killing this back the last couple of years that pretty much every tree is a widow maker. A little bit dangerous to be back here right now. Here's one of the trees I have to come back and hack and squirt. I got to do it within a few days. I need to do it while the sap is still not flowing. Ah, look what we have here. And any day now, it's going to get up pushing 50 in the next couple of days. And the sap's going to start flowing up at least for a while. And it uh, kind of makes the hack and squirt less effective. Something bedded down right here. Look at how deep that is. Well, it's it's only a little over maybe 15 inches or so right there, but it goes all the way to the ground. And you can see the tracks coming in and tracks going out. So something was bedded down here. I'm, I'm positive it was a deer. Let's just look at the tracks. Yeah, it was a deer. Yeah, that's pretty interesting that they... They dug all the way down to the ground. It's been so windy that by digging down to the ground like that and being over the edge of the ridge here, it was probably a lot warmer down there. A lot of times you'll find where they just lay on top of the snow. I've already found a whole row of like belly imprints over on the back ridge over there, all right in a row. There was probably eight, nine of them of various sizes. Yeah, that's one thing about having a dog with you when you're going to look at tracks. They kind of mess it up. Yeah, these are deer tracks right here. It's got to be really hard on the deer walking through this deep snow like this. Whatever this is, it's not a deer, it's whatever it is, it's dragging, dragging its belly or its tail. So it could be a fox, it could be a, I don't know, it doesn't look like a raccoon. Raccoons kind of plow through. Let's see if we can find a raccoon trail here. Raccoon in the snow. Yeah, and now Izzy is doing some of this stuff. Ah, oh, she's hitting on something underneath that pile of stuff. What is it, girl? Don't get your nose bit. Something's probably living under there. Yeah. 
yeah, that's how animals got to move through this stuff. You could see how difficult it is for her. And she's not, she's not tiny, but she's way bigger than a coon or a possum or something like that. I don't know how on earth they move through this stuff. Uh, the tracks pretty much disappeared. There's a little bit down that way, but up ahead, this is the prairie restoration right here. So this is what it looks like in the winter. If you've watched any of my videos from last year, I did a lot of restoration work in here last spring, especially spring and into the summer trying to get this ready for planting about I would say 70% of the trees right through here are dead and what's still alive I've marked either it's stain or it needs another hack and squirt then this is all going to be restored to prairie grass and burr oaks and like I said I have 25 of them but the thing about uh, oak savannas is that the trees are not that close together. You know, there's prairie grass and an uh, occasional tree here and there, oak tree. But I think I should plant them a little on the thick side and then thin them out later. Only problem with that is that's going to be really hard to do after nurturing them for years to go in there and and cut some down. I don't know if I'd be able to do it. Yeah, I think this is all Izzy here. And this snow is ranging anywhere from six, eight inches, and then you hit a pocket where it's a foot and a half, two feet deep. Really difficult walking. Okay, so Pretty much nothing up that way. I don't see any tracks except for Izzy's. So I will meet you up here a little bit. We'll go check on that chestnut tree, see if there's any tracks going up to it. It's getting near time to spray the burr oaks that I planted along the road and this chestnut and the three down in the woods. So I'll check on them on the way back and I'll get back with you over by the chestnut tree. The area right here by the vineyard, you can see it's scrubbed clean from the wind. But I see tracks running just below the chestnut tree up there. Of course, it's probably going to be deer tracks, but I don't see anything by the chestnut. I can pretty much see the base from here. So nothing's been over there no point in going up there. You could see how deep the snow is here. It just got deeper and deeper as we got over this way. Our last dog we took through here, Natalie and I, it was like the second year that we lived here. We didn't even own the land. We were just walking in the winter and we almost had to go home and get a sled to get the dog out of there because she was buried so deep and she couldn't move. That was a Doberman. That's interesting. I'm guessing that's a rabbit, but it's so deep in the snow that it's dragging its back legs and this must be where it's landing as it hops. Pretty interesting. Tough to be a rabbit in this weather. Okay, this is gonna be tough. Let's do it. The chair in the woods has more snow on it than I have ever seen on it. But again, when it gets this deep down here, I generally don't come down here. I wait for it to thaw for a few days, 
like it will in the next couple days. So this is by far the deepest snow that I've walked through down here. It's awful damn beautiful though. As long as I don't slip and fall and break my leg and get stuck back here. I don't know where your stick is, honey. It's probably not a good idea. We don't do sticks in deep snow, honey. Let's go. No, honey. Let's go. That's a root. Oh, she got it out. She's bound and determined. I'll toss it later. well you can hear that but the wind is kind of roaring in the treetops above us but it's really nice and calm down here once I get back up to the top of the ridge it's gonna be kind of nasty I can't wait till tomorrow it's gonna be warmer and way less windy I get out here and do that hack and squirt Oh, we can't keep doing this. The beginning of that prairie restoration is right up there. And that's where we saw all those deer tracks. And here they come. Come right through here. And on down the hill. Be interesting to see how many actually took the road. The road's right there along the ravine. Go check that out. She really, really wants me to throw this stick. Oh, that's about as bad a throw as it gets. Okay, we got a track going right to my chestnut tree. Let's see what that looks like. I don't think that was Izzy. No, it wasn't. That's a deer. Goes right along the edge. Oh, the tree's not here. It's up. Oh, but the track goes right by it up there, too. Yeah, another deer track, but you can see they're having a hard time walking through this stuff. They're like dragging their foot. Rabbit. Okay, here. Deer all over the place right here, and rabbit. And there is my chestnut, which I guess looks okay. It had, the, I believe it had the top bitten off to begin with, so I'll just keep spraying it. I have a spray coming up real soon. Yeah, they're using the road. You can see the tracks running down the road and running across it right there. And then there's some that come in and then meet with the other ones going that way. Always interesting to see how the animals are moving through the woods in the winter. Izzy. This is gonna be really deep and really nasty going up this hill. I'll see if we can find something up there to look at. Well, we almost had a decent accident. I went to throw that stick and it snapped right at my hand and it went over the edge and she just about jumped over the edge to get it and luckily she listened to me i 
I don't see it. Thought, oh, there it is right there. But I don't want her slipping down. That's, that's a, a long drop down to the bottom. And with this snow here, she could go tumbling all the way to the bottom. We'll find you another stick, honey. No, we'll find you another one. Izzy, let's go. No, let's go. I know, honey. I gotta find her a stick. Wow, that was a pretty fun climb. On a normal day in the summer, you can get out of breath coming up this. It's about, you know, 100 feet up and it's fairly steep, but this snow is just so deep and it drags on your feet. I don't know how this dog does it, but this is definitely a lot better than paying money to go to a gym and go on a stair stepping machine or something like that. Do they even have stair stepping machines? I don't know, maybe. I know Natalie uses boxes. I forget what they're called. But she uses boxes for her training, for her high jump stuff, which is coming up in two weeks. Her training starts, or she's going to start training. I don't know if it's official yet. Okay, I got to get up on this bank right here. And I think one of the boxes is right in here somewhere. So I'm going to start collecting them boxes and work my way up to the homestead up there. This is going to be really difficult. I think I'll go follow this deer trail and then cut through that way. But that's very deceptive. That's going to be some very deep snow. You can see where it's collected, like around all this stuff here. There's areas in there. It looks smooth, but there's areas that are two, two and a half feet deep. And then there's other areas where it's, you know, six, eight inches. So it's kind of a rough climb. All right, grab your stick and follow me, honey. Come on. All right, I guess right through here. We have one of those holes in the snow. I still don't know what causes them, but you can see whatever did this, there's no like major prints going up to it. All this stuff is just from bits of snow falling from the trees. So whatever did it, did it from the underside of the snow up. And I don't know if there's a, if there's a tunnel down there or if that's a vole, because the voles will go between the snow and the ground and they uh, make tunnels uh, under the snow like that in the winter. So it could be just where a vole ended his tunnel and the snow is so deep you're not going to be able to see where the tunnel is. But I don't know for sure. I just know that they come up from the ground. It's not something digging and a lot of stuff is ejected. You can see these leaves and stuff. Very interesting. If you know what does this, make sure you uh, comment in the comment section below. I would really like to know for sure. I'm guessing it's voles or moles. Or possibly chipmunks. Alright, it's going to start getting really windy and the snow is really deep here. So I will get back with you in a little bit. That's deer running right behind the house here. Picked a pretty nasty place to walk. Kind of zigzagged and went around that way. Okay, let me get up this thing. All right, I'm trying to shield the camera and the microphone from the wind. It is really windy right here. I'm at the beginning of the boxes. There's that little one there one here and a good size one over there so I'm gonna start collecting these and head up the hill 
Okay, one last thing to do before I'm done with my outside work here today. Sorry, Blue. I gotta fill their feeder, their nighttime feed. They still have a little bit of their daytime in here because it's, oh, it's maybe three o'clock, but I'm not coming out here again at five and feeding them. I gotta jump in the shower. Got all sweated up from that walk. One hell of a workout. Not real sure how well you can see in here. This looks like their evening ration, so I'm gonna get this over on the on the table over there and then break it up for them. Okay, this is some really nice hay. I'm sure they're gonna love it. This might be too hard to do with one hand, but what you gotta do is get it in here. And then it has to be it has to be broken up so that uh, it's not in uh, flakes like this. Otherwise, it's too hard for them to get it through the slow feeder down there. Sorry, big horse. They have very sensitive noses to dust. And I'm making a little dust here. Made them sneeze. You can probably wait until I'm done, Mr. Mark. Then you won't have dust. They are always so eager to eat. And anything new always seems like it's better than what they have. I guess they're just like humans in that way. But when they're in their, when they're in their north pasture, they always want to be in the west pasture and vice versa. The North Pasture has their favorite type of grass, but this is so much bigger, so there's a lot more grass. So if they're in one, they want to be in the other. Yeah, we'll step back a little bit, big horse. They say you shouldn't feed horses from a round bale. I guess they can get respiratory problems because they will hollow it out and have their entire head inside of it. And it can get really dusty in there. And with a big nose like that, it's just primed for, uh, primed for problems. Okay, just about done. So it's going to be pretty warm overnight. These horses will be toasty warm. I mean, last week at this time it was 17 below. And I think tonight it's going to be... Oh, I don't know if it'll even get below freezing. Probably will, but... Okay, and then that'll work its way down as they eat it. I explained this whole contraption in another video. What's it called? Frankenfeeder. This was supposed to be built into the inside of the haymow. This was a temporary setup because we were approaching the end of the year, the year that we built this dry lot. And I had just built that which was a lot of work. I started it in the end of August, you know, and that's getting real close to winter, so I didn't have a huge amount of time to get that done. Then I had to put a railing on here and get this thing built for the winter, so... I didn't get to build it in here, and now it just doesn't seem that important. I was going to have a table right here, and then you feed out through, out through the wall. We might do it, but there's just so much other stuff that's more important right now. Okay, that's going to wrap it up for today. Izzy threw her ball by the fence and now thinks the horses are after it. 
so she wants to bark at the horses because she threw her ball against the fence. She's all worried about it now because apparently horses are ball stealers. Okay, now get it and get out of here. Go. Ball saved. Now she's just going to throw it again. Okay, that's going to wrap it up. If you want to see the progress here, I'll be doing the hack and squirt tomorrow in that deep snow again. And hopefully I'll be able to get back into the breezeway project soon once the girls get back and do something with that duck that's out there. So make sure you subscribe and click on the update icon so you're notified when I post new videos. If you got any questions or comments, make sure you put them in the comment section below. And if you give the video a like and or share it, it helps us out greatly. Thanks for watching and have a great day.